The Eternal Struggle Atari 8-bit vs Commodore 8-bit Will there be a winner? Hi, nice to see you on this channel. Ready for a bit crazy video? Let's start! We have a draw for now, but what's next? What about another Atari vs Commodore fight? In the blue corner we have Commodore, in the red one Atari. The chessboard from the Master Chess game, available for both computers will be the fight area. Let Atari 800XL play against Commodore 64, and we'll see which one wins. Atari plays white, Commodore plays black, Atari starts. However, if you are not that passionate about playing chess, then don't worry. Later in the video, we'll compare both computers step by step, starting with processors through memory, graphics and music capabilities, and ending with some peripherals. One thing is for sure, it will be interesting. In the meantime, a few words of explanation. In the 1980s, both companies competed strongly with each other. Also, owners of devices from one or the other manufacturer often spent long hours discussing which computer is better. Everyone tried to prove that his favorite game release for his computer was just perfect and the one developed for the competitive device is much worse. Moreover, software that is just demos was created to show the device's capabilities in order to outshine the other side. Belonging to one or the other team was almost as strong as belonging to a group of supporters of one or the other football club. Except that there were rather no physical fights. More often it was a fight for arguments. Not always sane and sometimes it was more emotional than calm analysis. There were also transitions from one team to the other. The most famous was the transfer of the legendary businessman Jack Tramiel, born in Łódź in Poland. One thing is for sure, this man had a tremendous influence on the fate of both companies, it means Commodore and later Atari. We'll return to the story of his life and to playing chess later in this video. Why did Atari name its computer 65XE when it only had 64 kilobytes of RAM? Because even in terms of naming, it wanted to be better than Commodore. More seriously, let's try to briefly compare the Atari 800XL with Commodore 64. Processors first. The Atari used the 6502C processor and the Commodore the 6510, later 8500, which were software compatible with each other, meaning that they used the same instructions, but they didn't assure hardware compatibility, meaning you couldn't swap one with the other. In addition, the latter had some additional hardware capabilities, which, however, we'll not discuss, and in practice they did not matter much. Most importantly, they differed significantly in clock frequency. This undoubtedly gave an advantage to Atari which was simply faster, but unfortunately not as much as it would appear from a simple mathematical comparison of the frequencies of both chips. One important issue should be mentioned here, which reduced the effective speed of the Atari by about a quarter. It is about how the main processor and video processor shared memory access. At Commodore it was just better designed. But in details, this is a topic for an additional video. 
as a curiosity, it can be added that the graphics processor could be turned off, for example, when performing mathematical calculations and with a black screen, the main Atari processor could work at full power. In Commodore, a similar trick was also possible, of course, but the main processor had a much lower frequency. However, the comparison to today's processors may be shocking. Let's take, for example, the AMD Ryzen 7 3700U, a very average processor for the year 2022 in which this video is being made. Such say somewhere in the middle of the range when it comes to performance in today's home's PCs. This processor has a base frequency of 2.3 GHz and 4 cores, each with 2 threads, so a total of 8 threads. In addition, it is possible to work in turbo mode for limited time with a frequency of 4 GHz. But let's focus on the base frequency, 2.3 GHz, so 2300 MHz. Comparing with the Atari processor, we can say that the frequency of one core of the AMD processor is almost 1300 times higher. Now let's add the fact that we have 8 threads in Ryzen processor and the Atari had a single threaded processor. Will somebody count 8 times 1300? It is worth emphasizing that the comparison of processors that differ so much in architecture and that are 44 years apart in the development of technology is not easy. Also, just because a microprocessor has 8 threads and 4 cores doesn't mean it's twice as fast as a processor with 4 threads and 4 cores. That's why the estimation of processor's performance by simply comparing the frequency and the number of threads is a very, very large simplification. And you can probably fail the exam at university for something like that. But it gives you some rough idea how the Atari was incredibly slower comparing to today's devices. Ok, let's take a break now. As theoretical analysis is one thing and practice is another, so let's compare the selected games available for both computers. Please decide for yourself which version you like better. Please be sure to write your choice in the comment section. Referring to the beginning of my video, let's stay in outer space. First Star Raiders 2 from 1986, first release on Atari and a year later also on Commodore. The game has a very interesting story. More information can be found in the links below the video. Anyway, under this one I have prepared quite a large collection of various interesting sites about Atari and Commodore. Please have a look. Ok, I am not talking that much anymore. A little break from talking. Let's come back to technical issues. In practice the size of the ROM did not matter that much for the user. Let us remind you that this is the memory in which the system procedures that control the computer are stored. It can be compared to the BIOS in today's computers in combination with an operating system such as Windows or Linux. Both computers came with basic language that you could use to learn programming and to create your own handy tools. None of the default basics was too good, which resulted in many other versions of this interpreter on the market. If we briefly try to characterize both standard built-in versions, one could say that the built-in basic on Atari was terrible, and on Commodore even more terrible. Other programming languages were also gaining popularity, such as the famous logo or the less known fort. The former was often used to teach the basics of programming in schools. 
How many students complained about the disobedient turtle on the screen? I don't know that. In the latter, quite large applications or games were created, such as the famous Polish unforgettable hits such as The Curse, Lord of the Darkness, AD 2044. The RAM memory in which the programs were stored was identical in both computers. It is worth adding, however, that in the Atari family the twin brother was quite popular, the 130XE model with a larger 128KB memory. On the other hand, the successor of the Commodore 64 from the second family, the Commodore 128, also with doublet memory, did not gain much popularity and the design was significantly different from the younger brother and was created with business users in mind. So I have doubts if you can compare the Commodore 128 with the Atari 130XE, in my opinion no. The additional memory in the 130XE was available in the form of exchangeable memory banks of 16 kilobytes each and in practice not so many programs used it. It is much easier to compare the RAM of the old 8-bit computers to today's computers. Nowadays most home PCs have 8 or 16 GB of RAM. Simple calculations show that it is just over 131,000 or 262,000 times more than Atari or Commodore. Ups, but a big difference, right? Time for another break. What about playing Space Shuttle A Journey Into Space? The title alone explains it all. I will just add that the game version for the computers in question was prepared in 1984. Let us return to the chess game for a moment and to the story of Jack Tramiel or in Polish of Idek Szmiel. According to some sources, the correct name is Icek or Idek and the surname is Tramielski. One thing is for sure, this man was one of the Commodore 64's success co-creators and one day he left Commodore setting up his own company which later took over Atari, having then significant financial problems. After the acquisition, Tramiel uttered the words, business is war. One more of his sentences has gone down in his story. We need to build computers for the masses, not the classes. Undoubtedly, it was he who contributed to the success of Atari, with the new models introduced during his reign, that is Atari 65 XE, 130 XE, 800 XE, XEGS console or later Atari ST. His transition to the opposing team hurt the Commodore company, whose secrets he knew well. It is time to go back to comparing the technical parameters of the two legendary computers. The time for chess will come later. Let's talk about the graphics. In Atari 2 Antic and GTIA chips were responsible for this area, while in the Commodore VIC-2. Relatively simple integrated circuits imposed a lot of limitations. It seems that the most important difference was the available color palette. Atari allowed to use 16 hues and each of them could be displayed in 8 or even 16 different brightness, 
or more professionally luminance values, which in practice meant 128 or 256 colors. Commodore could only use a palette of 16 colors, with white and black being only in one brightness, and the other colors are a combination of a hue and one of several brightness, depending on the hue up to 5 ones which in the case of C64 sometimes made it difficult to distinguish colors on monochrome screens, for example black and white, where distinguished elements was based only on their brightness. Each computer had a lot of restrictions on how many different colors could be displayed on the screen at once, depending on the mode. In practice, more advanced programmers often bypass these limitations using, for example, interrupts, but that's a topic for another video. An additional element diversifying the graphics were the famous sprites, used as characters or missiles moving on the screen. Due to slightly different solutions in both computers, it is difficult to compare them directly. Probably the most difficult to discuss is the sound circuits of both computers, which means Pokey in Atari and Sid in Commodore. Probably both have their supporters and opponents. In 1996, Byte magazine placed the famous Sid on the list of the 20 most important inventions in the history of computerization. As far as I know, Pokey did not receive such awards, but was it not a decision based on emotions and memories rather than the result of an actual analysis based on hard facts? I do not know. And another break, not too many breaks. By the way, did you find this mini lecture interesting? Please be sure to write. This time the classic Star Wars space shooter from 1983. Coming back on the ground, or rather to computer peripherals, it is worth discuss the speed of factory tape recorders or floppy drives. Here the Atari was on top, but with one big but. For Commodore, turbo systems for cassettes did not require any hardware changes in the tape recorder and they accelerated significantly read and write speed. However, for Atari, most of turbo systems required hardware modifications of the tape recorder, but later it was possible to achieve higher speed than in the Commodore. There were one or two turbo systems for Atari that did not require it, but in practice they provided very small speed increase and did not gain any popularity. What was the situation with Froppe drives? Here Atari was undoubtedly better. It is also worth adding that Froppe drives were very expensive and their price was often similar to the price of the computer itself. Finally, one surprising difference. Atari had a physical reset button, while Commodore did not. That was the thing which was used by fans of the first device to tease those from the opposite team. Joking, what kind of a computer is that, that even it does not have reset key? Just a curiosity.
probably one could talk much more about the differences between both computers. Do you consider this very brief comparison an interesting? What other issues should I raise more? Isn't time to complete our chess game? Let me remind that Atari plays white and Commodore plays black. In the meantime, please have a look at some interesting excerpts from an interview with Jack Tramiel, conducted by the Polish magazine for computer enthusiasts, Bytech, in the last years of communism. And checkmate, and the game is over. White chess played by Atari lost. Black chess, that is Commodore, is on top. I would not, however, draw too far-reaching conclusions from this game. Please treat it rather as a curiosity. Are you still on this channel? A little bonus for the tough guys. Please take a look at the comparison of the famous Polish game Hans Kloss for both computers. Stay healthy.